Thanks for having me. It's, that was a fascinating panel just before this, so it was a fantastic prelude to this conversation in particular. And what I'm going to try to do for you today is explain to you how we're thinking about cognitive computing uh, at, at IBM Watson, some of the things we're doing to apply it in the real world, um, how we're opening it up to innovators and entrepreneurs, which is part of the reason you know we've got a big presence here in the UK and throughout the rest of the world. So my goal today is just to show you a little bit of really practical application of the technology, the ecosystem that we're building, and ultimately give you a few examples of, of what we're doing. Um, so I wanted to start here because I think it's an interesting precursor to, uh, to where IBM ultimately kind of got to this, this place. I'm actually, it's a bit of a daunting task because we've been studying uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence for about three decades. We spend roughly $6 billion a year on research and development at IBM. And a big portion of this over the last probably 12 to 15 years has been focused on cognitive technology. So I'm representing those 20,000 researchers that spend every waking moment thinking about this. I'm simply a voice of it, which I'm you know, proud to be that. But it's a lot of really fascinating work that's gone on. And so we have a 100-year history. I think we're 104 years old now as a company. And Thomas Watson, the namesake of, of the Watson technology, said this early on, you know, that uh, our machines should be nothing more than tools for extending the powers of, of human beings. And that's how we think about Watson, side by side, you know, working in tandem with, with those of us that are skilled professionals and knowledge workers. That's how you see it put to work with oncologists at some of the big cancer research firms, with some of the bankers and how they have to deal with volumes of information that's moving at the speed of light. So let me just take one second and explain when we say cognitive computing what we mean. Uh, I mentioned briefly, it's, it's this kind of sweet spot combination of artificial intelligence, natural language processing, and machine learning all brought together. We deal with what we call unstructured information. So 80% um, yeah, of the world's data right now is unstructured. That's, these are the emails, the tweets, the blogs, the journals, the you know, newspaper articles that we're all drowning in. And to date, we have not been able to get to all of the insights and knowledge that comes out of this, this sort of freeform text, if you will. So when we look at this field of study and how we're bringing it to market, it's how do we get to those domains of expertise with the professionals that serve those particular industries and try to pull out the expertise such that Watson becomes a colleague to those experts. Um, I, I wanted to show you this. I found it fascinating. We had a, a big event in Brooklyn, New York, a few weeks ago. Um, and it was called the World of Watson. And it was just our way to kind of bring alive a lot of the, you know, the new areas of study and some of the, the demo demonstrations of technology. And uh, this was a mural that was painted real time at the event over the course of two days. He's a famous artist out in New York called Stephen Holding. But what's interesting is he was actually working with Watson as his colleague while he, while he painted this. What they did was, it's called a color app, and so it applied artificial intelligence to all of the images that are associated, in this case, with Watson. It looked through hundreds of thousands of images, and it looked at the uh, emotion that those images invoke on particular um, segments or sub-segments of the population. So what kind of inspiration could the color lead to when you're trying to kind of draw a, a specific emotion out of that crowd? And in this case, we were you know, trying to bring out innovation and growth based on uh, the population of, of executives and business leaders that were there. So over the course of the two days, he, he was guided by Watson hand, Watson's hand in terms of the colors that he used to paint this mural. I think, you know, just to bring it back to the real world, many of you are publishers or have magazines. You know, you can see how this might be applied as you release, uh, you know, your new summer collection and you want uh, a feeling of warmth and openness and discovery. You could easily use these kind of technologies to go find out how your population is today responding, you know, to cer certain colors and certain images. So apologies for the grainy video, but I wanted to show this. Um, so this gentleman... Uh, is one of our leading roboticists inside of the IBM Watson Research Labs. He actually studied under a gentleman um, named Rod Brooks, who's a, a, a leading roboticist out of MIT. And I'm going to show you a short video. Well, you're going to be introduced to a robot called Eli and how we're starting to work you know, man and machine side by side. Eli, grab it.
Eli, grab it. I'm confused. Which of the four things do you mean? Eli, what color is the object on the left? It's blue. Eli, grab it. Eli, grab that object. Eli, grab the white thing. Do you mean this one? No, the other one. Eli, grab the green thing. Sorry, that's too big for me. Eli, what is the object on the left? I don't know. Eli, that object is aspirin. Okay, this is aspirin. Eli, this object is Advil. Okay, that is Advil. Eli, how many Advil do you see? I see two. Eli, poke the thing in the middle. I don't know how to poke something. Eli, point at it. Eli, extend your hand. Eli, retract your hand. Eli, that is how you poke something. Okay, now I know how to poke something. Eli, poke the red object. So there you go. This is, um, you know, I know we had an earlier discussion about kind of, uh, you know, what could potentially happen with these technologies, but there are real world applications. We did um, uh, an interesting uh, joint venture with SoftBank out of Japan recently, and they have a robot called Pepper. And so they're putting Pepper to work in the banks, in the schools, in the hospitals. They have a real shortage of folks that can work in some of these locations. And so Pepper will have Watson inside and essentially be able to interact with customers and patients and students accordingly. So you'll start to see some, some real world application. Um, I, I wanted to talk about this, and it, and it may seem frivolous, but it's an example that's important for all of us. Uh, we actually taught uh, Watson the chemistry and science behind cooking. So while you know most of us may just enjoy the dish, the look of the dish, the style, the cuisine, there's actually a, a deep chemistry behind it, which is how combinations of food taste good together and why. There's a science underlying called the hedonic psychophysics. So what gives us pleasure at the molecular level? We taught Watson all of these things, and then we fed it about 9,000 recipes. So we worked with, uh, it's called the Institute for Culinary Education out of New York City and Bon Appetit magazine, and we taught Watson as much as we could about the, the most common ways that a chef would combine certain ingredients for traditional dishes. But then importantly, we used um, kind of a, an additional set of algorithms to say, teach it surprise, pleasantness, and synergy. So Watson surprised us with some dishes that we wouldn't normally put together ourselves. Um, it was quite interesting, and, and uh, Hannah, my apologies, because I'm not able to bring this up live. I'm gonna show you just two quick screenshots, but I would ask you if you have time to go see, um, our folks are demoing this in the foyer, and you can play with it yourself. If you, know, you have interesting things in your refrigerator that you're sort of bored with, uh, that you might wanna go try to you know, spice it up at home, then th this is a way to do that. What you'll see when you get into the Bon Appetit um, application, though, is the first question, so I pre-populated this, it, it says, you know, what do you want to cook with? What's your, what's your main ingredient? And in this case, I put sausage. And then the question underneath, underneath that is, what do you want to exclude from the dish? So I excluded celery seeds, since I don't like the taste of this. What it does then is it comes up with a whole set, in this case, frittata bites with charred sausage and feta, a whole set of ingredients and recipes it uses what we call discovery technology to go out and find these interesting combinations and ultimately present you with some options. Um, all the way from, you know, keep it classic, right, if you don't want to kind of get too dangerous with your cooking, all the way to surprise me and just, you know, toss it up and see what happens. 
So it's interesting, we actually published a cookbook and it was sold out on Amazon after a few days. And as I talk to people that are buying it, they're having really interesting dinner parties with this. So take that as you will. Um, just one, one moment on what we mean by ecosystem. And I heard uh, Julie Meyer speak to this earlier that ecosystems are becoming quite prevalent. And that's true for us as well. We, uh, we had an opportunity to offer up this technology to entrepreneurs and said, you tell us, what do you want to do with it, right? Come to us, what we will do is give you the technology for free, we'll give you the resources, we'll help you during the build cycle, and tell us what you'd like to do. And it's been a wild ride. My, my colleague Nish is here with me. It's been 15 months of just nonstop discussions with veterinarians, with um, uh, you know, folks that are trying to optimize supply chains, space exploration. Uh, I'm going to show you a toy, a really cool dinosaur that was created using the technology. So what's fun for us on a day-to-day -day basis is we have offered this up to anyone and anybody in any um, company that wants to take advantage of it based on the industry that you're serving. Um, so we found a lot of really great things. I am going to show you this. It's a, it's a real short video. It's a company called Elemental Path, and they're out of Silicon Alley in New York City. And this company could actually not exist had it not been for Watson. So it's an interesting story as, as kind of the, the backdrop here. The gentleman who founded it, his, uh, his wife is actually a teacher of autistic children. And if any of you uh, either have children with autism or, or know of children, they tend to interact with technology much more so than people. And so they were talking about a way in which children could start to engage with technology in a more meaningful way. And they created what they called uh, Cognitoy, which is this dinosaur. Um, it learns and adapts based on the interactions with your children. So um, what, you know, specifically, what are the questions your child is asking? What do they like? What do they dislike? Um, and it's teaching and interacting with them accordingly. Hi, my name is Lily. Hi, Lily. Nice to meet you. <laughs> How far is the moon? is about 250,000 miles That's from a lot. average. What is two plus two? Four. Awesome job, Grayson. What is the speed of light? The speed of light is 186,000 miles per wow. second. Can you count to six? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Super. <laughs> Tell me a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? Letters. Letters who? Letters him. It is freezing outside. <laughs> My favorite color is orange. Okay, I'll try to remember. Your favorite color is orange. See you later, alligator. In a wild crocodile. <laughs> Tell me a story. How about we make a story together? So it's just a, a, a fun example, I think, you know, we talk about really interesting ways the technology is being put to, to good use, transforming industries, you know, solving some of the, the, the biggest, most pervasive problems in the world, like cancer, uh, um, but it's also being put to work in, in fun ways as well. Here's another good example, uh, something that I had never thought of until this company came forward out of Canada called LifeLearn. So if you think about the life of a veterinarian, it's no different and in fact sometimes more complicated than our physicians. There are so many different types of species that are coming in to your, you know, your office. They're flying in, they're crawling in, they're slithering in, and they can't talk to you. They can't tell you what's wrong with them. So what they've done is they've actually sort of harnessed all of the, the medical journals, veterinary journals associated with veterinary medicine, as well as sort of taught the system based on some of the, you've got about 5,000 veterinarians that they work with today who are teaching Watson when it gets it right and when it gets it, get it, gets it wrong. And this technology will be then available you know, at the fingertips of these veterinarians as they do their work day to day. So again, just a, a, a very different um, way to, to look at using this. So that's the future we see. That this is uh, you know, here with us today. I did briefly want to mention to you, um, we launched uh, about three months ago, just based on as much energy as there was around the medical community when we first launched Watson, 
we launched Watson Health um, about two months ago. So what, that, what we've done with that is started to look at all of the data, the patient data, uh, treatment data, drug interactions, outcome data, medical images, and we're bringing all of that together. We, we partnered with Apple, and so we partnered with their health kit uh, technology. Johnson & Johnson, they've created a diabetes advisor based on all of this information. Uh, Medtronic, so if you have a hip or a knee replacement, you need to get back to you know, normal life quickly enough. Um, what are some of the ways that you can uh, leverage some of the information that, that's you know, been most helpful for most patients? So you know, we think this has a tremendous runway in front of us. We know there'll be more, uh, more opportunities for other innovators to start to build on top of this as well which is really where I want to leave you, you know, today. I think the, the, uh, you know, the, the century now is for us to be able to leverage the technology. We have fortunately been able to um, offer this up to entrepreneurs or, or businesses, anybody that wants to make use of it. So please, if you'd like to talk further about a, a business that you have or are thinking about, we're happy to help. And I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thanks.